She is going to be in the back um, live streaming this. So I will be speaking in two different directions. For those of you who have video, I will be going back and forth between uh, the, cam the computer and the camera because I haven't figured out how you not do that um, and, and record so that it can go on YouTube and Facebook Live later. So we're, we're trying to reach as many people as we can. And uh, currently, uh, if we have two folks who are sharing cameras, uh, which means that we have 14, 15, 16 people. We have... So I'm going to mute all. Okay. Can you hear me now? Please, for those of you who are uh, on screen, can you nod your head if you can hear me? I just want to make sure that I did not cut you off. Okay. Um, and uh, we do welcome you. Uh, and... Uh, in a little bit, if you have not picked up, Zonia, Zonia is here and she's going to play some music for us. The reason we cannot see a picture of her is because we pre-tested this in advance and we found that her um, iPhone is most happy when it's lying upside down under her piano and then we can hear the music best. So Zonia appreciates your uh, uh, patience as she forgoes the view of the underside of her piano. Uh, but we will enjoy having the music uh, that she will provide for us. Uh, and Zonia, you are not muted, so anything you say under your piano, we will hear. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. She says hello. Yes. So, welcome, dear friends. This is not the typical Monday, Thursday service. It is more of a family gathering around a table. A sacred meal where the conversation is warm and the food is life-giving. I invite you to get in a place where you are comfortable. Find some place near uh, you to uh, be prepared to eat and drink when the time comes. Uh, you currently are on mute until I unmute you during our time of sharing. Uh, please be very brief in your time of sharing, but know that just hearing your voice when I call upon you will bring us closer this night. Some of you, uh, I will not know who you are and will identify you by the phone number, or I will simply call out your name in case you come up out, uh, in case you uh, come in after I've already started now. This, so there will be some folks who may come in uh, that I will just have to call out by phone number because they weren't here early enough for me to find out who they were. Um, that will be your cue when I call your name, all of you, to introduce yourself. Uh, and Zonia is going to be sharing some special music from that place in her home which most grounds her, which is her piano. Uh, that probably doesn't surprise those of you who know and love her. So I invite you, as this worshipful feeding of our spirits and hearts begins, uh, I invite you to join me in prayer around our family table. O God of family tables and family gatherings, God of the hungry and the thirsty, we join you this night in your name to remember what it means to find our connection in you. You unite us together no matter where we are, no matter what has divided us or broken us, Throughout the ages, you have spoken to us wherever people have been fed, in peaceful garden walks, in trembling mountains and burning bushes, in bold prophecies and in still quiet voices, from a hay-filled manger in an upper room. Speak now through the mouths and lives of your people, hopeful words of love and compassion, of justice and mercy, of forgiveness and grace, of unity and connection. 
Forgive us, O oh God, for refusing your amazing gift of relationship, for forgetting our bond with you and each other. And release us this night from fear, despair, depression, and frustration. Center us, O oh God, in your grace. And by your Holy Spirit, sculpt and mold us into one people, acknowledging that we are more alike than any of us can begin to comprehend as we share together this night in Christ's name. Amen. Dear friends, I invite you to lean in during this time for a musical interlude. It is well to help us focus on this time. Thank you, Zonia. I am curious, dear friends, where you are right now. I, as some of you can see, am sitting next to the core of our church. The heart of this space is the table. 
If the table fits as your core of your home, you are invited to please go and sit there if you haven't already done so. For this time of worship, only if you are able. For some people, it's not necessarily as important, the table in the home. Uh, on this night, we are expanding the table to not be limited by the boundaries of space or time, but to embrace what is God's realm. God's realm is never defined by space or time, being both infinite and without limitations. I sit at our sanctuary table, which was graciously donated by Jerry Deaton, Sherry Lawrence's father, 25 years ago to this congregation. Sherry remembers it as the family table from her childhood, coming from her grandparents' church first. This table has seen many worship services and fellowship activities, many weddings and funerals, many, many friends and family were fed spiritually and emotionally from its heart. It is far more than a piece of furniture. It reflects what we believe to be important, what is central, without which we might lose our focus and perspective. This table is the center of our altar area that helps to keep us grounded. Some of you might have just such a place at your home that keeps you grounded. Some of you may have a thought about a family table or what it means to you to gather at the table. We will do introductions. I will unmute you one at a time. And if you would like to share about a space in your home that might be the core, or if you would like to share what it means to be fed at a family table, you are welcome to do so. Or simply just introduce yourself and then say pass and we will move to the next person. Most importantly, friends, you don't need to share. I just ask that you introduce yourself and say pass that w so that we know who is joining with us this evening. And I'm going to start with Bob Moore. Uh, wait, I have to unmute you, Bob. Uh, I know it's, where is it? Where is it? I can remember it's over here. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. Why is, I can't see Bob's name. Okay. Sorry, this is a learning experience. I'm going. Uh, hold on. Look, oh, there it is. Unmute. Okay. Now, Bob, we can hear you. Sorry. I, I need trifocals to read all this. Welcome, Bob. Please introduce yourself and your wife. Good, good evening. I'm Bob, and this is Sally. And we are seated, seated at our dining room table, which, which has been a very important part in our lives. Uh, when, when Janet asked to, to speak about a family meal, it made me think about the, my overarching experience of a family meal. When I was a child, it was more about the nutrition and the uh, get through it and get on with myself as a, as a rebellious teenager. And I continued on that was as far as eating and eating well, food-wise. And when it was when Sally and my lives joined, when she introduced me more to a table of abundance and gratitude and simplicity. And it changed my experience forever and to this day. And I carry that lesson, uh, be it to Glide or to Mexico. And the most wonderful thing is I see my boys carry that lesson out in their lives of a table of abundance. Great. Thank you, Bob. And now I'm going to call upon Gail to share with us. Introduce yourself, Gail. And where are you seated? I'm at my uh, breakfast bar in my kitchen, and it is me, Gail Albee. Um, good to be here this evening. Um, I was a military wife for many years, and then after that, my husband and I worked in civil service. So I have had many tables, uh, and sat at many tables. The one, though, that comes to my mind is my grandmother's table, uh, where I grew up. And that table was the focal point. There were no family rooms then. There was the kitchen. 
we eat meals. Uh, that's where sometimes she sat and sewed. Um, that's where they played canasta or um, pinochle, uh, a game I still don't understand. Um, but that was the heart of the family, the gathering place. And it's still one of my fondest memories. And I just hope that someday when my children think about tables, uh, perhaps they'll remember some of it they shared with me. Thank you, Gail. I'm now going to move to um, Susan, if you would introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Susan Smith. I'm also sitting at my uh, dining room table. And um, during this um, stay at home, our community center where I live has been closed. And we have several people that go down there every day to drink coffee. So that is something that can't be done now. So I have four ladies that come to my place every morning and have coffee. So it's kind of a, a, a different way to visit. We have space enough around the table that we're all good. And yesterday, I had a resident come who is 91, and she made muffins and brought them. So we actually had a very nice visit with her and the other ladies. I'm like Gail. I also remember my grandparents, and their table was big. It was in a dining room. And I remember when I was a kid, my aunt and my uncles and all my cousins, we would gather around that table, generally on a Sunday afternoon after church and have a meal. And all the visiting that went on, so I remember that. And take the table is very important to me. Thank you, Susan. Um, Karen, if you would go next, please introduce yourself. I'm Karen Severson, and I'm sitting at my desk tonight because you don't want to hear the television in the other room. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's that's me. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to make sure I mute everybody. Okay. Um, I'm going to go to Marcy now. Marcy, would you share where you're at? I'm in my brand new living room in the corner in my chair. Uh -huh. I am uh, just um, was thinking today about eating in, at the table, and we never did much of that. We ate in front of the TV, or when I was little, my mom wasn't home. But I did remember, I haven't remembered in a long time, one of my grandmas, there, there's a big family on my dad's mom's side and we all had a big redwood table outside and it, it was summer and there was tea and watermelon and I just um you made me think of that for the first time in years and years and that was a very uh nice loving situation uh the rest of my family just has a few members and we're kind of small but that was one time we all got together and I really enjoyed it. It felt like family. So thank you for reminding me of that time. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, I'm going to turn to Sally and Mary now and invite you to <laughs> just introduce yourselves and share whatever you'd like to share. Okay, I'm not really sure where I'm going with this. Uh, my name's Mary Devine, and this is my significant other, partner, wife, Sally. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm retired, and she is, oh, I'll let you, <laughs> I'll let you tell by yourself. <laughs> Anyways, we've been in a relationship for 18 years, and We've only been in Reading for six years, I think it was. Yeah. Anyways, all is good. Okay. And Sally, you want to share a little bit? Sure. 
I'm Sally. I'm Mary's significant other, life partner, wife, mm -hmm. whatever. I'm her piglet. <laughs> <laughs> that's my that's my new affiliation is to be her piglet. I love it. I figure Piglet and Pooh were really close, and whenever one of the other was having a bad day, the other one just came and sat down with them and didn't try and fix them. That's great. So that's on my table this year. My personal table is learning to sit and not fix. Uh, that's beautiful. You're doing very well. Thank that's, you. That's, that's it. beautiful. Well, thank you for joining our table tonight. We're glad you're here. And now I'm going to go to, uh, on the phone, uh, Leslie, um, and I have to be reminded of Leslie's, well, okay, now, all right, now I'm going to have to do this because I didn't write down whose phone number is which. So I'm going to go to the phone number that is 242-0878, and please introduce yourself. This is Barbara Riddle. Okay. I'm glad to be with everybody tonight. Um... My life is a long story. I started out in Chicago. We had a family table there. My father and mother had a great garden. We always had good food at the holidays and ever. And then we moved to Mississippi. From that point on, I lived in a mobile home growing up. And uh, we had our little table there, but we always had the holiday get-togethers. I went to New Orleans. So on holidays, when my brother got married, him and his wife had a big dining room table. And my mom and I would all come together and converge and have our family gatherings at their house for many years. A lot of good memories, Christmas, Thanksgiving, and Easter. And uh, I, I share them. Today I'm sitting at my, in my recliner chair in our living room by myself with the lamp table. Carol's on the computer someplace. But uh, I've got my bread and my drink here to do our Monday uh, supper with. So anyway, it's good to share everything. And, and I've been very blessed and, and I thank God for what I've had. All right, good to have you, uh, Barbara, thank you. Uh, now I'm gonna go to the phone number that is, uh, let's see, 243-7847, 7847. This is me, this is Diane. Uh. I am on my couch with my cat on my lap. Diane, it's good to hear you. And I'm going to go to, uh, let's see, uh, did I, have I done 241-1816? Who's that? That's Gail. Okay, I did you, sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, going down to 243-7847. Uh, you already got me. That's oh, gosh. Italian. Okay, see, okay. I'm sorry. Okay. 244 2440. That's me, Leslie. Hi, Leslie. Hi, Janet. Hi, everybody. I think this is wonderful. I, and I think you all probably feel the same way. Um, we didn't have a lot of. I, I know we had family meals, but nothing really stuck out. I remember Sunday dinner, we never had them at our house, but we all, I always went to my best friend's house, and that was very special. She was Catholic, and with a huge Catholic family, and it was wonderful. But much more recently, I find that I look back on a, um, I get emotional. <laughs> dinners for eight. I loved those dinners for eight. And the fellowship sitting around a table with people I didn't know very well and got to know. Uh, I think they're a treasure. We're going to have to work on that again. Sounds Thank you for doing this tonight, Janet. Sounds good. Thank okay. you. And I'm going to do 243-7847. I hope I haven't done that. Uh, no. That's 
Oh, for crying out loud. I need, I, I need somebody. I need a secretary to do this. Sorry. Okay. I'm going to go to 2468920. Have I done that one? 
really where we, uh, I'm surviving. My, my care provider comes five days a week for about three and a half hours. And we uh, do quite a bit of cleaning and, it, and stuff like that. And it, then uh, she fixes meals for me and uh, puts them in the freezer in, in little boxes. So I'm well fed and I'm surprised. I had to be uh, go up to Dr. Trevor's sleep center yesterday to have them evaluate my CPAP machine so I can get more supplies. And uh, uh, I was surprised I haven't gained my weight back that I've lost. So that's a blessing in itself. So anyway, God bless all, all, all of you guys. I, I miss you all so much. And uh, uh, as a child, my mom and dad had dinners at the table. And uh, then... Uh, if we had company, the kitchen dining room combination was so small that us kids had to either sit outside on the back porch with the plates in our hands or however we wanted to sit, but we weren't at the table. <laughs> yeah. But uh, after Lindy and I got married and we got our mobile home and everything else, we started having the holiday get-togethers here at our house. Plus, I had the dishwasher. My mother never had that luxury. And uh, so, all in all, life's been good to me. I miss my honey, and, and as I'm sure a lot of you do too. And then I just had to have my little bird put down, and I miss him tremendously. But I'm going to make it through this, people. Yes, you <laughs> are. I all of you, and you guys make it too. You are, yes. And it's good to hear your voice, Charlene, and we imagine you there in your home, and I believe that we just had Jesse rushing join us. Is that I'm going to unmute you, Jesse? Um, let's see. Hold on. Unmute. Come on. I'm trying. Why were you not? Okay. Hold. Hold on. Um, okay, Jesse. If you want to say anything, you need to unmute yourself because I am unmuting you, and so you may be on mute. Um, Otherwise, you don't need to say anything. Uh, we're just glad you're here. And uh, I hope it was uh, good for each of you to connect uh, via this way. Uh, I've got people on here. Okay, and Michaela has some folks on here on uh, line, which I believe are coming through Facebook Live. Do you want to share who they are? I don't know how many people are still on, but these are the names that are here. Uh, Pauline Smith. Chad Thompson. Rick. Can you hear? Can you guys hear? Pauline Smith, Chad Thompson, Rachel McFarland, Penny Anderson Virden, Gail Pittman, and Randy Randall Behel. Beely. 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 Randy Beely. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Herb and Lisa Morrison. Okay. So those are folks that are joining us through the table that we uh, call our website and Facebook Live. And we are grateful, friends, that you are here with us. Uh, can you see the table expanding in your mind? Uh, this small table is huge right now as we expand and grow and uh, as we have shared our thoughts together and hearing one another's voices and some of us seeing each other's faces uh, in our minds as each person speaks um, and trying to envision all of you in that space which is at the heart of your home life, we are connecting the dots between each other. One of my family's favorite games to do while we are stuck sitting at a restaurant uh, table waiting for our food was to play a game called Connect the Dots. Uh, Connect the Dots is sort of like uh, the game Connect Four, but we played it at a restaurant table with a napkin and a pencil. Uh, you make these series of dots on the napkin uh, in lines and uh, you take turns connecting two random dots in order to eventually complete a four-sided box. The one who completed the most four-sided boxes uh, would eventually win the game. 
I think we're living in a time right now where we need to spend more energy doing just that. Not playing this game, in a sense, but in connecting the dots between one another. You and I and all the others who matter to us are those dots. Think of the people you want to feel connected to this night. You might even write down their names on a piece of paper. Then imagine drawing a line between your name and their name, which becomes a connection between yourself and them. On a physical example, uh, just to give you a little bit of uh, history or a little bit of a tangible way to imagine this, consider, for example, if I wanted to connect with Zonia right now. I imagine a sort of Google map uh, design as a line goes out from the sanctuary, up through the doors, and into the parking lot, and I would uh, get in my car and go west on Placer, then I would uh, turn left on Buenaventura, and so on, until I find myself in front of Zonia's house, uh, just a few miles away. And now a line has been drawn from myself to her and therein we have found a connection and it reminds me that although we seem so far apart from one another right now we can still draw lines of connection with each other in our hearts and i think this is essential in times when we feel that even the smallest amounts of space that exist between us can feel so isolating and even amplified even when we're feeling empty and separated and barren, those spaces can sometimes feel so huge and insurmountable. Uh, and if you are feeling that way tonight, you are in the right place right now as I invite you to follow the dots which lead you to this table, even if it's in your imagination. Imagine yourself around a common table for it is there in your mind, in your seeking to draw closer to each other and to God, that we find the home of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit is in the space between us, between you and me. This is a place where God, by the Holy Spirit who creates and connects, can be revealed. Our God who by the Holy Spirit fills our empty places and draws us through the darkness into light, meets us in these spaces which exist between you, between you and me. In between all of you. That is where we find the Holy Spirit. We remember a night over 2,000 years ago when the disciples were stuck in a quarantine of sorts. They were hiding and they were afraid. They were secluded behind the walls of the upper room. To leave that space would have been very dangerous for them. And we get a glimpse of what isolation might have felt like from them. Each of them carried their own hidden fears of what tomorrow might look like. Each longed for relief and a return to what they knew to be normal. None were content with how things were going, and they all were feeling a profound sense of disconnectedness. They needed a reminder. We need a reminder that the Holy Spirit dwells in every empty space, finding ways to fill it up with life and love, drawing us closer to the source that is all life, finding ways for us to be bound together with every other part of creation. And now our story, some that you have shared with us this night, our very connection over phone lines, over virtual lines, are connecting us together at one common table. That, my friends, as some of you have already alluded to, is a miracle. 
As we prepare to eat at this table tonight, Zonia is going to play, and if you are comfortable, you are invited to sing along the first two verses. I am going to unmute you all, so be prepared. <laughs> you have the power to mute yourselves via your own electronic devices if you want to do that. Um, but I am now unpower, unmuting all of you. So we're going to sing along to the first verses of Let Us Break Bread Together. Now, I don't know how to do this unless you come over here, Michaela, and bring the cam uh, camera so they can see the verses as well. And Zonia is going to play with us and sing with us. And I'm going to sing very lightly, and Michaela's going to sing louder because her voice is so much prettier. I'm going to what? You're going to sing. <laughs> and we're going to sing, Let Us Break Bread Together on Our Knees. Then you repeat that again, and the refrain is, When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, O Lord, have mercy on me. And then we will do Let Us Drink Wine Together on Our Knees with the same refrain. So I invite you, dear friends, let us sing together. Let us break bread together. Zonia, will you lead us? Let us break bread together. you were brave enough and I will tell you that technology gets a little mean with us when singing and so sometimes there's a slight delay but do not let that uh, dissuade you from the good news that uh, the miracle of voices united over the miles uh, cannot be meet, uh, cannot be beat and I am just grateful for each of your voices um, so dear friends, we gather at this table of communion uh, this night to fill up the spaces between us, even if uh, they're a few feet away, as in the case with some of you, or miles and miles away. Um, some, if I'm correct, could be hundreds of thousands, well, uh, maybe a thousand miles. I do believe there's someone from Kansas City here. Uh, so no matter where you are, the miles fade away at this table because this is God's table. And wherever we are, we are close together when we gather at this table. The Apostle Paul gives us an image I want you to hold on to during these isolating times. At the end of the words that he provides in 1 Corinthians, which sets the tradition for what we still practice today, Paul says, every time you eat this bread 
and drink this cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. Until he comes. Not if he comes. Until he comes. And I tell you, we eat this bread this night, participating in a meal and drinking this cup until God brings us back together again. Not if God brings us back together again, until God brings us back together again. We will unite face to face with the body of Christ once this virus is behind us. And it will happen. We can count on that. This is only temporary what we do tonight until we come together once more around the table. Until that moment, we gather in different places, different time zones, different cores of being which help to keep us grounded and focused, to remember the tradition which has been passed on to us, that on that night when Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to his friends wherever their state of mind was that night. He drew the circle together and he drew them in and he said, Dear friends, eat this bread, for it is the body which is broken for you, that one day we will be put back together again. And likewise, he took the common cup and he blessed it and he gave it to his friends, whatever mindset they were in on that night, and he said, drink of it, all of you, for this is the cup of the new covenant which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Dear friends, gather at this table in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Oh, great and miraculous God, we thank you for the ability to gather around a common table even if it is within our minds, we know that you make it real. And you bring about the miracle of us being united together from all the fragments of our lives that have been pulled apart during this difficult time. We ask, O oh God, that you will weave us together in unity and love this night that we will be filled with the bread of healing, that we will drink deeply of the cup of newness. Oh God, we praise you for being present in this meal, wherever we are. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Eat, drink, be filled, and as you do, be mindful of those who do not have enough to eat, enough to drink, that our table might be expanded to them as well. All are welcome in this time. Sonia is going to play for us after I unmute her. <laughs> that would be the thing I need to do. Sorry. Um. Okay, wait a minute. Everybody's unmuted right now. I'm going to um, unmute Sonia only. Sorry. Okay, Sonia is going to play for us now. Let us listen as you eat and drink. Uh.
note was to move like that. Thank you, Zonia. <clears throat> After sharing in a meal together, the, the disciples sang songs of praise and then went out to the Mount of Olives to pray. There Jesus was arrested and brought before the council of chief priests and before Pilate. Just slide it down. Before Pilate, not quite that far. <laughs> Thank you. My sound technician is now my light technician. <laughs> so there Jesus was arrested and brought before the council of chief priests and before Pilate where he was sentenced to death. He was nailed to a cross and from noon until three in the afternoon, the whole earth was dark. All of the earth huddled together, unsure how long the dark would last. And Jesus cried out with a loud shout, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And then he died. The light which graces our table is now extinguished, and we disperse to our own homes to wait for the light to rise again. A reminder, dear friends, to all of you on the phone or on Zoom, you just have to hang up or click to leave meeting, and you will be disconnected. But please know that those are only words that pertain to technology and have absolutely nothing to do with the spiritual bond that we share together. So now, dear friends and family, cling once more to that promise that God has not forsaken us in our time of darkness. God will keep us safe in the face of trouble and weave us even more tightly to each other. So let us look to one another for support and for encouragement. The threat of death will not stop the reign of love. Disease and fear will not have the final word. Go to hold tightly to what grounds you in the faith and celebrate the Holy Spirit who connects the dots for us all, by the grace and the peace of God's love. Amen and amen.